Hello world, a dark web marketplace leaks 1 million credit card numbers on purpose as part of some bizarre marketing campaign. And Apple responds to criticism of their newly hatched plan to automatically scan the photos on your iOS devices for illegal material. That's in today's episode of The Week Web, where we break down and dissect cybersecurity related tech news. A criminal marketplace has intentionally leaked 1 million credit card numbers for free. That's not $1 million worth of credit cards. No, they've literally published a TXT file containing 1 million different individual credit cards. The perp here, or World Cards, is a relatively new illegal carding marketplace, having launched just a few months ago. It would seem this leak is part of some bizarre marketing campaign. Just like a new coffee brand might give out free samples in shopping centers, this is essentially the same thing. What better way to attract attention in the criminal underworld than shower people with a million and free credit cards. The credit cards are accompanied with expiration dates, CVVs, names, countries, states, cities, addresses, and so on. Basically all the information a miscreant would need in order to commit fraud. The marketplace allworld.cards is so new that the clearnet site is still active. It even uses Cloudflare. According to Whois, their domain was registered as recently as in May. This provides an alternative portal to their site rather than through their dark web link. The site quite literally sells credit card numbers, which have likely been plundered via an array of means. Malware hidden in e-commerce sites, point of sale card skimmers, phishing emails, and so on. Bleeping Computer reports all worlds sell these cards individually for between 30 cents and $14. Assuming an average price of $5, the leaked database is worth a staggering 5 million US dollars. This business model might not make much sense. Why sell credit cards when you can use them yourself? After all, you're going to be able to extract much more than just $14 from a credit card. The reason is liability. Cashing out one of these cards comes with risk. Cashing out thousands or millions of these cards comes with so much risk it's not even worth doing. All World and other such sites sell this risk onto others at a fraction of the true value of the card. In the footer of their website, All World make it clear that all information posted to violate the law, seemingly poking fun at just how ridiculously illegal their website is, albeit in broken English. I explored the site a bit whilst researching for this video, and it's fraught with issues. Firstly, I tried searching for UK-based cards. The site returns a long list of cards apparently registered in the UK to English banks, though the attached addresses were based in America with Californian zip codes. Either this is indicative of really badly put together fake data, or simply a bad database query. The buy button also didn't work. A forum post by All World claimed just 27% of the leaked cards were active. However, they seem to have sold themselves short, as according to research from D3 Labs, 50% of the credit card numbers are currently active. The concept of stolen credit card marketplaces isn't new at all. Just a few months ago, the FBI shut down Slilp. Also a dark web carding site, Slilp had been active for almost a decade and is said to have caused a loss of 200 million US dollars to American companies alone. The emergence of All World just goes to show that as soon as one of these sites is taken down by the FBI, another quickly pops up to fill the void in the market. Having leaked a massive 5 million US dollars worth of card info for free, it's clear All World is trying to make it big in the carding world. Their goal with this massive dump is to attract attention and thereby new customers. At a guess, their tactic is working. This story has been quite widely reported. No doubt bad actors are scrambling to take advantage of what is essentially free money. However, cybersecurity company D3 Labs has said that after doing their analysis, they've sent details of the card numbers to banks to enable them to carry out the appropriate mitigation actions. Before we get to the fallout of Apple's new controversial image scanning, I need to tell you about today's sponsor, Linode. VPNs are useful and help to keep you private and secure, but they come with a trove of issues. Mainly, would you entrust a VPN company with your traffic over your ISP? The bottom line is that if you didn't set up a VPN server yourself, you really can't be sure these VPN companies won't keep logs, sell your data, or monitor your traffic. That's why I've teamed up with Linode to give you the opportunity to host your own private VPN for free. Linode is a totally customizable cloud hosting platform with a whole host of server apps you can install with one click. Using their WireGuard or OpenVPN apps, you can spin up a private VPN controlled wholly by yourself in a matter of minutes. Linode launched way back in 2003. That's three years before AWS was even a thing. Linode doesn't spend a second on site hustles like grocery chains or reading you bedtime stories. Cloud computing is what they do best and is their only focus. Linode is offering all of you guys $100 in free credit just for signing up. Use your $100 to instantiate your private VPN or literally anything else cloud computing related. They have 24 seven phone support, which is a godsend in the world of servers, so you'll never be left out in the cold. Go to linode.com satonic or click the link in the description to claim your free $100. 
There has been an overwhelmingly negative backlash to Apple's newly announced plan to scan photos stored on your iOS devices. Who could have seen this one coming? My previous video, which you should go watch, covered Apple's new initiative in detail, but for a quick refresher, starting next month, a new feature in an iOS update will start automatically scanning all the photos you upload to iCloud for instances of abuse images involving children. This is known as CSAM material. The scans are done against a database of known CSAM pictures. The process is carried out locally on your device, rather than centrally on Apple servers. Apple claims their new system is designed with user privacy in mind, but a lot of people are worried about what this means for privacy, and truth be told, I struggle to find anyone in support of the new scheme. In fact, the response was so vehemently negative that Apple published an FAQ on their new strategy, directly addressing people's concerns, something they rarely do. IMO, the most worrisome part of this image scanning is, could governments force Apple to add non-CSAM images to the hash list? This is something the FAQ answers, or at least attempts to. The Fruity Corporation says, Apple will refuse such demands. They go on to say, we have faced demands to build and deploy government mandated changes that degrade the privacy of users before and have steadfastly refused those demands. Not sure I agree with Apple's claim there, but before we pick that apart, let's put our cynicism to one side for just a second. Apple has at least on one occasion publicly stood up to law enforcement. The case that comes to mind is that of the San Bernardino shooter's iPhone. The FBI wanted Apple to create special software which would allow them to unlock the shooter's iPhone 5C. Apple refused. Not only did Apple refuse, but they took a very public stance, publishing an open letter to their customers. The letter explains why privacy and encryption is so important, and adds that what the FBI is asking of them, in the wrong hands, this software, which does not exist today, would have the potential to unlock any iPhone. This sounds all well and good. The company received a lot of praise at the time for taking the stance they did, but let's put our cynical hats back on. Apple refusing to unlock the shooter's iPhone was never going to have an impact on their bottom line. It's not like Apple's business model in the US is contingent on keeping the FBI happy. In fact, what you find is that when Apple's business model is on the line, they're more than happy to count out to government and law enforcement demands. For instance, let's take everyone's favorite example, China. When China asked Apple to remove all VPN apps from the Chinese app store, Apple did so. When China asked Apple to store all Chinese user data in data centers effectively owned by the Chinese Communist Party, Apple complied. There's a long list of concessions Apple has made to China, and I'm not going to list all of them here. The point is that when it's convenient for business purposes, Apple, and pretty much most corporations to be fair, seem to cave into pressure from law enforcement, assuming the government behind them is big enough. The overarching point is that whilst I don't doubt in the present this technology will only be used for detecting CSAM material, today's plan isn't necessarily tomorrow's plan. We don't know what the world will look like in the future. Ten years down the road, we might be involved in some war, which could provide motivation for Western governments to increase the scope of surveillance on citizens. With the technology of the likes Apple is introducing already installed on everyone's devices, it's quite easy to imagine pressure on Apple to widen the gamut of material they search for on our phones. And who knows where that could take us. I don't believe Apple is trying to be the bad guy here, or that they have some kind of evil plan hidden up their sleeve. I do think on this occasion they are acting out of altruism, but as they say, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Couple that with Apple's juxtaposing actions on the matter of user privacy, one second stating, privacy is a fundamental human right, the next allegedly signing over decryption keys of user data to the Chinese government, I think people are right to at least be a little concerned. If you enjoy this kind of video, make sure to help me out by tickling the like button for the YouTube AI, as well as turning on those sub notifications. If you're looking for something to watch next, go check out my previous video, which explores how Apple's new photo scanning system works in more detail. If you get a lot of value from this series of videos, do consider becoming a channel member. As always, sources will be linked in the video description. Stay tuned for more hacking videos, and have a good one.